Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video we are tracking a tropical wave that could potentially find a fa area of favorability in the Gulf of Mexico and become a tropical depression or storm. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Monday, July 15th, 2024. The purple arrows are several tropical waves that we are monitoring. The one that we are interested in right now would be the black arrow pointing towards a tropical wave located somewhere around 30 to 34 degrees west longitude. And it's, uh, what we're looking at is basically just a tropical wave right now that doesn't have much intention of developing, at least out here. But as we go through the next seven to 10 days, there could be a pocket of favorability that where it could, if its energy survives, could develop into a potential tropical depression or a storm. So let's take a look. Here's the vorticity and signature of our tropical waves that we're monitoring. The one on the right in the square box is the tropical wave that is the possibility of developing in some time at seven to 10 days from now. Here's a close-up view of our tropical wave, and you can see nothing too concerning right now. Just a cluster of thunderstorms just trying to survive because there's a lot of Saharan dust out here. National Hurricane Center is not expecting any tropical development over the next seven days. But tropical waves this far out take time to reach the Caribbean and the United States coastline. It's about 10 to 12 days based on this projection of a map here. So let's use the GFS model to see if and when this tr tropical wave does try to develop or not. The black hexagon is the large vorticity area that this tropical wave is enveloping. It's beneath our Bermuda Azores high, which you can see stretched out across the Atlantic there, and three other tropical waves that are in front of it. It's in an area of low wind shear environment right now, but like I showed you before, the thunderstorms are lacking because it's also embedded that piece of vorticity with a lot of dry air from the Saharan air layer. So it's, if it's going to survive this piece of vorticity, it needs to find an area of favorability of not only with low wind shear, but also increasing its moisture. So if we look from a week from now to next Wednesday, next Monday, July 22nd, you can see that tropical wave has now made its way to western Cuba, just south of uh, Florida and west of the northern Bahamas in that straight area between Florida and Cuba. There's also a couple of other tropical waves behind it, uh, but you can see the Bermuda Azores High is mostly centered near the Azores, but stretching back towards Bermuda. Uh, so it's keeping that more northwest track of this protected tropical wave towards the Gulf of Mexico. It will be moving into a more light wind shear environment. You can see it's going to be going through a lot of wind shear between now and the next seven days. So we'll have to see if that helps it uh, dissipate or if it survives. This model is saying it could potentially survive. And it will have gained a lot of moisture by the time it gets to this position as well. And that's being drawn up thanks to some of this tropical moisture from the not only the Gulf of Mexico, but the Central America pulled up from uh, South America as well. So if we then look to day eight, which would be on July 23rd next week, uh, we see that this potential piece of tropical wave energy is now just east, I mean, just west of Tampa, St. Pete, Florida, in the eastern, northeastern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the upper levels of the atmosphere look to be conducive for, de for development. We will have this developing upper level ridge overhead with the upper level trough just over the northern portion of Texas, so that's going to allow this storm to potentially move northward into the northeast portion of the Gulf of Mexico. That upper level ridge will also create a pocket of favorability with low wind shear, and its moisture will continue to con try to consolidate around that developing low pressure system, which you can see here. 
just a couple of hours later uh, in the afternoon on Tuesday, July 23rd, where the vortex tries to concentrate itself just off the panhandle coast of Florida. And then by the time we get to uh, the early morning hours of Wednesday, July 23rd, this would be around 2 a.m. Um, on this model run, we would see a either a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm with a low pressure center of 1,013 millibars making landfall somewhere in the panhandle of Florida or in the Mobile, Alabama region uh, along the Gulf Coast. This is just one possibility GFS is also known to have some biases uh, in their uh, convection, uh, allowing the vorticity to tighten around pieces of uh, energy that sometimes are there or not there. So let's take a look at the European model as well. So if we use the European model, we can see the tropical wave that we were monitoring move up through the Greater Antilles, but nothing really comes of it. Uh, and doesn't really make it to the Gulf of Mexico. It gets sheared apart as it's trying to go around our Bermuda Azores High. And if we look at the ensemble models, you can pretty much see the same thing. The GFS has a couple of models that are suggesting uh, two or three areas where this storm could potentially go. That's not a lot to really hold on to. So this looks to be more of a GFS bias storm, not an actual tropical storm that could develop. But we will monitor it just in case, because you never know. Uh, things can change over time. Uh, but you can see the ensemble models on the European are not picking up on this system either. So like I said, we will monitor the tropical wave over the next 7 to 10 days, see if it does find any areas of pockets of favorability. If it does move into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, which will by then potentially have a low wind shear environment and does have warm sea surface temperatures still conducive for tropical development. So we'll keep an eye on it, but right now it looks like the Atlantic will remain quiet for at least the next seven days. Beyond that, we'll see. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.